Greetings, my friends. Actually, I feel like some of you are more like family. You've been watching my videos for as long as I've had this YouTube channel and we share so many experiences. We've come to have a lot in common. So let's add another thing to the long list of things we have in common. We're working our way through a unit on heart attack. This is video 166. And the first tutorial on heart attack was video 160, which means this is the seventh video on heart attack. So if you haven't watched those that precede this one, do so. <laughs> Most of you have my book. And whether you have the first edition or the second edition, it is so beneficial in following along. The material for today's tutorial is in chapter 28 under the section entitled Risk Factors. Our topic today is your family as it pertains to your risk of heart attack. Now, next week, I'll be giving you a tutorial on all the risk factors for heart attack. In other words, I'll present the entire list of things that serve to increase your risk for heart attack. But today, I want to talk only about one of them, your family history. Do you know why I want to talk specifically about your family history and nothing else? I'm going to guess that you assume that it's the most important factor. Well, it isn't. In fact, it's just the opposite. It's the least important factor. The problem is that most people think it's the most important factor, treat it as the most impact, important factor, and in the process of doing those things, they overlook all the factors that are the most important. So I'm taking this opportunity to put it into perspective for you. I don't want you emphasizing the least important factor at the expense of all the more important factors. Your family, remember? I care about you. <laughs> Now, why should you watch a video on your family history as a risk factor for heart attack? Well, because most people have this particular factor misplaced, and watching this video will ensure that you're not one of them. Over and over, I encounter women who have a positive family history of heart attack. Positive family history of heart attack means that you have one or more family members who have had a heart attack. This is a family tree. Now, you won't see me for a moment, but this is you. You're the one in the middle waving. A positive family history means that one of these other folks has had a heart attack. It may be a close relative like your father here, or it may be a more distant relative like your great aunt here. It may be someone on your father's side of the family or it may be someone on your mother's side of the family. When it comes to family history of heart attack, it really doesn't matter how close they are or which side of the family they're on. All that matters is that they're family. Of course, it is more significant if they're a blood relative. People who marry into your family aren't as important, but they are actually more significant than you might imagine. Now, why do you suspect that someone who isn't even a blood relative might have some bearing on your risk for a heart attack? Well, it's very simple. Your risk for heart attack has a lot more to do with your environment than it does with your family. Think about it. Families share the same environment. You usually live near each other, and if you live near each other, you have many things in common. You probably have very similar diets. Face it, you learn all about food from your family. You all share the same dis dishes. You all cook the same recipes. Food is a large part of what you share with your family. So, although you share genetic material with your family, the diet you adopt actually has more of an impact on your risk for heart attack than your genes do. You can do a whole lot with your diet to reduce the chance of your heart attack genes from manifesting. 
Another thing that you share with your family is your lifestyle. Some families are very active. They engage in active sports together. Exercise is one of the things they have in common. Other families are sedentary. Family time entails sitting around watching movies or playing video games. So while you share genetic material, the activity level you adopt is more important than your genes in determining your risk for a heart attack. You can drastically reduce your risk of a heart attack with exercise alone. Another thing that is common among family members is certain habits. Smoking is common among family, family members. Dental hygiene or lack thereof is common among family members. Alcohol drinking habits are common among family members. And all of these things have a much greater impact on your risk for heart attacks than your genes alone. So while your family history is pertinent to your risk of heart attack, it's nowhere near as important as your diet, activity level, or lifestyle habits. Your risk for heart attack is not imposed upon you. Rather, it's something you control. You have more control over your risk of heart attack than just about anything else. And this video is designed to make sure you know that. So I'm going to present three scenarios. They will depict the different possibilities for women with families having a history of heart attack. And they will show you what a difference you can make in your own fate. Okay, so here is scenario one. Let's say no one in your family has ever actually had a heart attack, but you all have very high cholesterol levels. Doctors have always warned your family members that they should take cholesterol-lowering drugs, watch their diet, and exercise. Your family has a bah humbug attitude about it. They aren't gluttons and they aren't sloths. They say they'll just eat everything in moderation and they exercise occasionally. And they don't take any medications to lower their cholesterol. You are prematurely menopausal at only 37 years of age. None of the other females in your family became postmenopausal before the age of 55. Your cholesterol is extremely high, just like the rest of your families. So there are two routes you can take if this is your situation. You can say, oh well, and ignore the fact that your premature menopause is a real game changer with regard to your heart attack risk. And in doing so, you could become the first person in your family to actually have a heart attack. Or you can say, holy cow, I'd better do everything I can to prevent a heart attack. And you can adopt a diet and lifestyle that will greatly lower your risk. Start HRT right away and follow your cholesterol closely, ready to take a cholesterol lowering drug if necessary. The fact is that your personal situation is much more important than your family situation in determining the likelihood that you'll have a heart attack. Next is scenario number two. Let's say you come from an immigrant family. Your ancestors were very hard workers. They climbed their way up the ladder to become prominent members of society. And now your family is very well off in America. Your relatives were born in the homeland. Even your brothers and sisters were born there. But you're a lot younger than they are, and you were born in the U.S. The rest of your family loves the traditional food from the homeland. They go to extremes to cook it regularly and authentically. It's a lot of work, and it takes a lot of time, but it's much healthier than the typical American diet, that's for sure. You don't know why they bother. You prefer the fast food of the good old U.S. of A. Burgers and fries are your favorite. And you just don't get why they all still work so hard when they don't have to anymore. You like to chill. You're sedentary. You smoke. You eat to your heart's content. Or actually, it isn't making your heart content at all. But you don't know that because no one in your family has ever had a heart attack. But your doctor has told you that you're at high risk for a heart attack based on your genetics and cholesterol studies. He was surprised that none of your relatives had actually had a heart attack. You assume that because none of them has ever had a heart attack, 
you're immune from having one yourself. They've all stayed relatively thin with their hard work and traditional food. But you're a real American. You're on the heavy side. Recently, you were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And your kids are plump too. But you're fine with that. Now, there are two possible routes you can take in this scenario. You can realize that your family members have averted a heart attack by adhering to their healthier diet and lifestyle, decide that you should do the same, and avoid having a heart attack yourself. Or you can continue your current habits and put yourself at great likelihood of having the first heart attack in the family. Now for scenario three. You come from a fat family. Everybody's fat. They're fat as kids and they're fat as adults. There is a strong history of heart attacks at young ages. Your father died at age 42. Your brother had a heart attack at age 40, but he's still alive. He's extremely sedentary, morbid, morbidly obese, and on oxygen. You have seven other relatives who have had heart attacks. Most of them died. Almost everybody smokes. They enjoy it. And fatty chicken fried food is everyone's favorite. Your family eats a lot of it and desserts are a must. You all spend a lot of time together doing nothing. You like to just hang around together and shoot the breeze. And you like the fact that you don't pressure one another to get up and do anything. So there are two routes you can take if you have this family. You can mimic their behaviors and choices, in which case you'll probably end up having a heart attack just like most of them. Or you can adopt the healthiest lifestyle you can muster and avoid ever having a heart attack. You can eat a vegan diet. You can exercise regularly to stay fit. You can avoid the fatty foods and sugary desserts. You have the genes that predispose you to a heart attack, but how you live your life determines whether or not you will ever actually have a heart attack. It's all up to you. So what are your choices in those three scenarios? My goal in this tutorial is to impress upon you the fact that you have tremendous control over whether or not you have a heart attack regardless of your family history or genetics. You are not destined to have a heart attack just because your family members have. You are not doomed just because your cholesterol is high. Your diet, lifestyle, and behaviors are much more impactful on your risk. It is never, ever too late to adopt a healthier lifestyle. No matter what, it can only serve to lessen your risk of a heart attack. Okay, so that's it for today. Next week, I will give you the list of all the risk factors for a heart attack. That one video will be extremely important. And be prepared because we'll fill in part of your worksheet. So if you haven't printed out the worksheet already, please do so. You can find it at my website, which is menopausetaylor.me, under the tab for YouTube video tutorials. In the meantime, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please subscribe to my channel, and if you need a one-on-one -on -one consultation for this or anything else, schedule it at menopausetaylor.me. I'll see you in a week. <laughs> Bye.